In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus urged us to be peacemakers and in our relationship with our enemies to be loving towards them rather than just seeking justice all the time, to do good to those who persecute you, to overcome evil with good, to treat others as you wish they would treat you rather than as they have treated you. Don't let them set the standard for your behaviour. You set the standard for their behaviour. Solomon had something to say about this in Proverbs chapter 25, where he said, Do not go hastily to court, for what will you do in the end when your brother has put you to shame? Debate your case with your neighbour, and do not disclose the secret to another, lest he who hears it expose your shame and your reputation be ruined. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we share these verses, Proverbs 25, verses 8 to 10. When we have been offended or upset about something, we can easily believe that we are right and the other person is wrong. But the other person will always have a different perspective. It may be that we are indeed unjustly treated, and that the other person is wrong, and we are right. But it may not be willful on the part of the other person either, because they may not have understood our situation, even as we have not understood their situation. So, when there is a conflict, Solomon says, don't take the matter quickly to court, but rather debate the case with your neighbour. Talk to your neighbour about it because you can never be sure what the court will say. And that's the same thought that Jesus had in the Sermon on the Mount. When you go before the judge, you could never know which way the judge will judge, because not all judges are righteous. Some are influenced by their worldview, some are influenced by money. Even within the church, we have an issue of disagreements, which can become serious. Jesus explicitly says in Matthew chapter 18 from verse 15, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear you, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. In this passage, a brother has sinned against you. And Jesus says, don't go complaining to other people about it. First of all, go and discuss the matter with the brother, with the purpose of restoring fellowship with your brother. If he refuses to take any notice of you, if you can't convince him, then you may involve one or two others so that at the mouth of two or three witnesses every word shall be established. In other words, these two people will sit and listen and maybe join in the discussion. But what they will hear the argument of one and hear the argument of the other and come down on the side of one or the other. They are not there just to be your advocates, but they are there to help you see the other person's point of view as well as your own point of view. And if, having considered the matter, they urge the brother who is sinning to repent of that, but he refuses, then this matter needs to be brought before the elders of the church and discussed by the church. So this is the situation with the person who is in the fellowship of the church and within the church we should be at fellowship with one another. The reality, of course, is that there are many people who refuse to talk to other believers and they refuse to discuss the matter 
which is very sad. But if they refuse to hear the church, Jesus says, then let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Jesus doesn't say, well, then take the matter to the secular court. No, he says, just treat that person as if he was not part of your inner circle. For the Jewish people lived at peace with heathen in their community and tax collectors in their community, but they didn't treat them as friends and share their lives with them. But they were civil towards them. They would still do business with them. And so that's what we would do in the case of somebody who has opposed us. It's not our job to punish them. We are to live at peace with them, even though we are not able to fellowship with them. And, of course, if the matter can be resolved in our discussions with the person, then God will respect that resolution. If the matter is not resolved, then in the end, when Jesus judges the world, he will judge that matter. Paul says exactly the same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unrighteous, and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more then? things that pertain to this life. If then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? I say this to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you, not even one, who will be able to judge between his brethren? But brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. Now therefore, It is already an utter failure for you that you go to law against another. Why do you not rather accept the wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? No, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Again, we have a list of horrific sins, but the exhortation that Paul makes to the Corinthians was, why not rather let yourselves be cheated? Let the matter rest. Let God deal with it. And God will deal with it. You don't have to take the matter to court just to vindicate yourself. But if you do bring it to the church, then surely there is someone in the church who is competent to judge the matter. But if the person, as we've read from Jesus' teaching, doesn't respect the judgment of the church, we just treat them as unbelievers. God is the one who knows all things and he can deal with all of these things. But our responsibility is not to be overly righteous but to be peacemakers. Not to be focused on wrongs but to be focused on making things right. The reality is that God's people are often persecuted. And so Peter says, This is commendable if because of conscience towards God one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. When you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For to this you are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled did not revile in return, When he suffered, he didn't threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed. 